George Mason University Soccer. Brought to you by Bud Light. Mr. Gaddy's. Giant Food. Jiffy Lube of Fairfax. Budget Car and Truck Rental of Northern Virginia. And by Bank of Virginia. Bob Gottkid, along with Richard Broad, bringing you a very important George Mason men's soccer telecast from the GMU Soccer Stadium here in Fairfax on a windy and rainy afternoon. We're high above the stadium under the canopy to bring you the action, and it's a key game for the Patriots as far as determining the Colonial Athletic Association Championship. If they win this game, they have a good chance to again go to the NCAAs because this year the CAA has an automatic bid into the NCAAs. If the Patriots lose their game, they would be just about out of it. Their chances would be slim. They really can't even settle for a tie. They really have to win this game. Wayman Mary might be able to get away with it. goalkeeper in his first year and Bobby Lilly at sweeper back has anchored a very very tough defense what they've got to do is really beef up the attack today if they're going to have a chance to beat William and Mary it seemed like offensively the Patriots went into cold storage right after they beat North Carolina back of the Budweiser Invitational in September they scored five goals in that game and since that time they have something like eight goals in 11 games but as you mentioned Martin Dumphy has been outstanding and they haven't been giving up hardly any goals Bob he's the best uh, keeper that I've seen in college soccer certainly this year, and uh, William & Mary's going to have a tough time scoring on him today. The William & Mary comes into this game with a record of 13 wins and four defeats. The Patriots are 7-2-5. and five. Now, you can look at it in one way and say the Patriots have only lost two out of 14. You can look at it another way and say they've only won half of their games. Uh, when you're playing for a league championship, do ties hurt as far as the confidence factor, or does anything other than a loss help? Well, at this point, George Mason needs to play for a win, Bob, and uh, so does William and Mary. I don't think William and Mary will be shooting for a tie out here. They're a very aggressive, very proud team. They play wide open, and uh, I don't think either team will be playing for a tie this afternoon. They're going to both go out to win. Patriots have made a couple of slight lineup changes. Bob Lilly, who normally plays the sweeper position, the key defensive position in front of the goalie, is going to be put on John Bell, the top offensive player for William & Mary, who has, I believe, five goals in his last two games since coming off a month-long suspension. Lilly is a very good defensive player. What about that matchup? Well, I think the thing is, Bob, that William & Mary's uh, top two players are Johnny Tuttle and Scott Bell. And the point is that um, they've got to sc stop Scott Bell from scoring. He's got three goals, in the uh, five goals, rather, in his last two games, and they've got to shut him down to be effective. Well, we're about to have the starting lineups of this contest. And let's check the William & Mary lineup for you right now. Scott Bell is the striker, number seven, and he is out of Canada with John Tuttle playing a left wing, which is also a forward position. Number four is Darcy Curran, and he is the left midfielder, a senior out of Newport News. And number five is Ricky DeHaan, the right midfielder, a freshman from Malmo, Sweden. Tim Larkin normally plays in the midfield, but today he's at the right wing position, and he's number nine. Number 20 is Bruce Ensley, who's from right here in Burke, Virginia. By the way, Larkin's from Fairfax. Ensley is a center midfielder. Steve Kukulis is number three, and he is a freshman from Potomac, Maryland. He is the sweeper, a very important defensive position, and playing in front of him, the side the stopper, the man is going to have to stop Sam Sumo, Summers Hambrick from La Jolla, California, and uh, he is that stopper position today. Steve Sapinski from Springfield, Virginia, is the left fullback. He is a freshman. 
Martin Taylor is also starting today, also out of Fairfax, Virginia. He is another fullback, a sophomore. The head coach is Al Albert in his 16th season, and this, uh, this team he has taken twice before to the NCAA tournament. His assistants are Mike Flood and Scott Repke. For the George Mason Patriots, starting up front, Sam Sumo is, the, is one of two strikers JMU is using today, and uh, Sam uh, wearing uh, for the uh, Patriots number nine from Monrovia, Liberia. The other striker in a slight change is Chris Meyer, number 20. He's from Springfield, Virginia. And the uh, third forward playing a wing position is Bruce Lubdell from Dallas, Texas, number two. In the midfield for George Mason. The starting midfielders for the Patriots, Stevie Hayes, who is from Tulsa, Oklahoma, number 11, and Tony Walsh. He is on the left side, and he is from Glasgow, Scotland. Hayes is a freshman, and Walsh is a sophomore. And Ray Alcesser is the third midfielder in a 4-3-3 lineup. We're just underway. He's the center midfielder from Hamwell, England. In the defensive positions, Bob Lilly is the stopper, and Lilly is from uh, Dallas, Texas, is from uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, rather, junior. Doug Bradley, the coach's son, a senior from Burke, Virginia is at left fullback. Steve D'Antonio is the right fullback. And Ian Carter is the sweeper back, and he is from Mississauga, Canada. And we are just underway. The Patriots with a record of 7-2-5, and 3-0-2 oh, in league play, and Wave of Mary 4-0, oh, an important CAA affair. First restart, Bob. Ray Alcesser trying to chip it in, and William Mary defended that very, very well. The Patriots putting a little pressure on the Indians in the early going. GMU in white and William & Mary in green. Almost identical school colors for these two teams. Great punch clearance by Ian Peter, the William & Mary keeper. He's a big, very good athlete playing in the goal, Bob, and he came out and asserted himself very decisively on that first ball, and that's important that he do so. All right, William & Mary will control. The goalies in Peter is... Richard just mentioned, and Martin Dunphy for the Patriots, one of the best in the country. Martin's only averaging .3 per game, just three goals in 897 minutes. That's good in anybody's league. Peter. Again, our thanks to Media General for bringing you the best in college soccer. Two of the better teams in the East, George Mason and William & Mary. Number 20, Bruce Ensley. Long for 10, John Tuttle. And knocked out of bounds by Steve D'Antonio. Already you're starting to see the aggressiveness of William Mary trying to force the play forward. And they're especially dangerous on corner kicks like this. Scott Bell will take it. And he's very accurate in his service of the ball. And William and Mary's always been a very good team on restarts. They're especially dangerous here. Bell has five goals. Those five all in the last two games. And he has two assists. Nice play by Dumphy to punch that ball away. Bell keeping it in play. Sam Sumo, number nine for George Mason, who last year was the leading goal scorer in the country with 24, but this year he was in a slump until last week against American U when after 10 games he scored his first goal. Since early in the year, he has eight for the season. For the Patriots... Number 11, Stevie Hayes, the action in midfield, and it's William & Mary's ball. Excellent play by Bruce Ensley. He won that ball, played to Scott Bell, and Scott Bell, very experienced player, held that ball excellently, drew the foul from Bob Lilly. Number three for William & Mary, Steve Kukulis. Trying to keep it in Patriots territory. Sam Sumo, number nine for the Patriots. Number 15, Steve Sapinski from Springfield to the goalie, Ian Peter, who hails from Wales. Barry Wales. Back to the uh, fullback for William & Mary. Bob, William & Mary will do this. They have a great deal of confidence in Kakulis, their sweeper, and they'll build the ball out of the back as long as they have time. And if uh, George Mason comes forward, then they'll put it up long as Ian Peter just did. Patriots coming off a 1-1 tie to American University here at GMU, while William & Mary won at GW last week. 
three to one. And you saw that game, uh, Dick. Do they look as impressive as the score indicates? Interesting enough, I, I think uh, William and Mary Bob was fortunate to win that game. They didn't have a particularly good outing, but they got a great game from Scott Bell, who got three goals, and he's especially dangerous. Uh, Gordon has taken a big gamble, Gordon Bradley, in switching his defense around, but he feels that Bob Lilly is the player to mark Scott Bell rather than Ian Carter, so the two have switched positions. And there's Bob Lilly going yep. up for that header right now. Gordon feels Lilly has a little bit more foot speed to stay with Bell, who handles the ball very well. Number 20 for the Patriots. Controlling Chris Meyer. And he's in his first appearance today in a Patriot uniform at a forward position. Normally, he's a midfielder. Now, he scored the lone goal in the win over James Madison about 10 days ago. one nothing. In fact, lone goals is about all the Patriots have been getting of late. It's been almost a month since they've scored more than one goal in a game. But that's been enough in many uh, instances. Restart taken very quickly there by Doug Bradley trying to get at the back of the defense before William Mary can get set. Number three, Kakoulis. It's knocked out of bounds, and it'll be George Mason's ball. Number 11 for the Patriots, Stevie Hayes, a freshman from Tulsa. He called the foul on the William Mary defenders this time. This will be a direct from a flank angle, almost like a corner kick. And what Again, would he try to do, loop it in situation. here? Yes. Right. Number two for the Patriots, Bruce Lovdell, very close to heading that ball in. Ian Peter is very good in the air, and he's going to control a good portion of that box if he can get out to balls. I don't think we're, that, that George Mason is going to be able to beat him consistently by flighting balls in as they just did. He is their main uh, goaltender and is averaging just 1.1 a game. William Mary has scored a little more of the Patriots, 41 goals over 17 games. The Patriots in a total of 14 games have scored 30 goals. So I guess when you put it together, the team's averages offensively are about the same. Both of them pride themselves on fine defense. Number four for the Patriots, Ray Alcesser from Hanwell, England. And he's being pressured from behind. Number four, Darcy Curran. William Mary, let's see who will put this ball in play. There's Al Albert, the William Mary coach at his 16th year. He's done a tremendous job with this program, Bob. The, the, I guess the dean of coaches in this region. He may be at this time. He's a William Mary graduate. He played soccer here, and uh, he's done a tremendous job in developing a regional contender year in and year out. This is Al Albert we're looking at right now. Just underway here at the George Mason Soccer and Track Stadium in Fairfax. We played uh, only about seven minutes. And number four, Curran for William & Mary. Number nine, Tim Larkin from Fairfax. And a good defensive play and out of bounds by Bob Lilly. Or check it by Doug Bradley. Good job from Burke. Good job, too, Bob, by Timmy Larkin on that play. He really wasn't sure he could get it in. He forced the play, and now he has a corner. And again, William and Mary is always dangerous on these corners. They usually put a couple guys right by the near post or attack the near post and bring balls in from there. Bell had 14 goals last year to lead William and Mary and 38 points overall. Knocked out of bounds by Tony Walsh. So once again, Bell will try to get it in play. Not a very good clearance by Tony Walsh. Gives William and Mary a second shot at this. It's a cold, uh, windy day here. It's kept the crowd down a little bit. And over everybody's head, in Carter, number 21, the closest GMU player to it, number 10 for William and Mary, John Tuttle, one of their forwards. Throwing it in play is Carter. Looking perhaps for D'Antonio. That's Ray Alcesser on the right side, a midfielder, past number 20, Chris Meyer. Hayes, number 11, and Meyer to put it in play. By the way, that goal to beat Madison was his first and only one of the season. The other day, Sam Sumo was the lone goal scorer against AU. Out of bounds, pass number two, Bruce Lobdell. Lobdell's been in a scoring slump himself of late, but I understand his right foot is heavily bandaged and has been close to breaking. When I say that, he has almost a hairline fracture, but he says he's able to go, and the doctors say it's okay to play. It won't make it any worse. So every game could theoretically be his last with the type of injury that he has, but Lobdell's trying to make the best of it. Steve Hayes working against Curran, number four. Good move by Hayes, trying to center it. Lobdell, no, it's knocked away by number 10, Tuttle. Pressure put on by the Patriots, 36-04 remaining first half. Last year, down to William & Mary, George Mason won it 4-2. Two years ago, they were 5-2 winners here at GMU over William & Mary. 
George Mason's made a significant change, as you called our attention to before, Bob, in playing in three, a four, three front three? runners up front. It's a very different thing they've done before. They're trying to get that extra scoring punch by moving Chris Meyer out of the midfield up to a right wing spot. Action at midfield, Sam Sumo and Meyer. And the header by number five, Rick DeHaan, also an outstanding scorer, the leading goal scorer on the William & Mary team, DeHaan. Sam Sumo with an opportunity. Good play by Peter, but Meyer putting the pressure on, and it's just over the goal and a little wide. Chip Meyer, he had his sights set. Uh, the Patriots are getting opportunities, Dick, but as Gordon Bradley has mentioned on many occasions on our weekly television show, they're just not finishing. What is the key to finishing? Let me just point out first, Bob, very bad mistake by William & Mary. You don't want to play those casual balls back in the back with a player like Sam Sumo waiting to, to receive those balls. As far as the finishing, I think the goals are going to come if George Mason continues to apply pressure, and certainly they're going to come if William & Mary makes those kinds of mistakes. Left midfielder Curran to put it in play for William & Mary. He'll toss it in. Steve Hayes, number 11 for the Patriots, the nearest player. Coming from behind, Chip Meyer centers the ball to Lobdell. Lobdell on the header. Sam Sumo bringing it up the field for the Patriots, working against number two, Summers Hambrick, who's marking Lobdell, or marking Sumo, rather. Larkin, number nine, in the middle to five, Rick DeHaan, who's from Sweden. One of the few Scandinavian players probably in the CAA, maybe the only one, I don't know. Centered. For the Patriots, number four, El Cesar, with a good move. Back to Bradley. Taken back by the green-clad William & Mary team. Scott Bell is number 7, 20. Ensley from Burke. Several local players on this William & Mary team. That Their last... roster loaded, I think, with uh, nine players in the Washington area. Bob, Nick? that last time... Bob Lilly for pushed forward for George Mason, drawing Scott Bell back into the defense. And if they can continue to do that and get Scott Bell away from a front-running position, they're, they're going to take a lot of William Mary's attack away. Again, here's Bobby Lilly coming out of the back, getting into attacking mode, and forcing William Mary forwards to defend him. Sumo. El Cesar Sumo in the middle. Shot a little wide. The Patriots are forcing the action a little more in the early going. That is William & Mary. Dick, by the way, we want to mention that William & Mary is in a 4-3-3 alignment. And isn't that a little different for them? Don't they normally go with two forwards, or do they? They vary it, Bob, from time to time. It all depends whether they decide to go with just Scott Bell and John Tuttle up top or, or move Timmy Larkin from the midfield up front. They Good. can play either way. Good centering kick. On the header, Bob Lilly keeping it alive to number four, El Cesar. El Cesar had a goal against Georgetown, the only one a couple of weeks back in the Patriots' 1-0 win. And they had to go two overtimes to beat a Georgetown team, which really doesn't belong on the same field as George Mason. So it's been a struggle. Great play defensively, but they just couldn't put it in the net till the second overtime. But all you need is one goal to win if the other team doesn't have any, obviously. Lilly, or rather Walsh, and uh, he was trying to lead Meyer, and Walsh just let that one get away from him, uh, Dick? Uh, that ball should have been played at Chris Meyer's feet. He was wide open. There was a mix-up in the William Mary defense. Uh, switching positions by George Mason caused confusion, and, and Chris was wide open that time. Uh, Tony should have put the ball to him. And Peter, we played about 13 minutes. We've got two goaltenders. Uh, from, well, they're not uh, from the United States. One from Wales, one from uh, Ireland. So I guess probably about the same style uh, player. Well, the English, the United Kingdom has a tradition of great goalkeepers on the schoolboy level yeah. and the international level. And uh, Martin Dumphy's father was a goaltender on the Irish national team, so he's had a lot of experience. And I was asking him the other day, what's the difference between the American goaltender, Dick, and the uh, goaltender, say, from Ireland or from the United Kingdom? And he said, well, the goaltenders here are taller, but maybe don't know quite as much about the game as uh, some of the European players. For the Patriots, Bradley keeping it in play, a fullback position. For the Patriots, El Cesar centering, Sumo and Peter. Knocking it back out. Good punch by Ian Peter that time to clear the ball away. Both Wasn't sure he could that. catch it and did very well to punch that away. Ian Carter from Canada for the Patriots, number 21 to El Cesar. El Cesar trying to keep it in play. And it's just over the end line. Number five for William & Mary, the closest man to it to Han. 
And Peter with the kick. Now, William & Mary's 4-0 in league play. And the uh, winner of the league championship, CAA, automatically goes to the NCAA tournament. First time that's happened, either in the days of the ECAC South or in the CAA. In the past, you had to hope, you had to win as many games as you could and hope for an at-large bid. Now the pressure is especially on winning the league games, although there is an outside possibility for either of these teams to go as an at-large team for the extra spots in the region. Unnecessary uh, pushing... foul there by Bruce Ensley. Uh, William and Mary had put George Mason in some difficulty, forced him to play back in the back, and had the pressure on, and now they're giving a restart to George Mason, which Doug Bradley takes very well here. Bradley, Meyer, down the right side, Hayes, the freshman from Tulsa. Good soccer playing areas, Tulsa. Working against Curran, number four, and knocked out of bounds by uh, number nine, Larkin. And so uh, it'll be William and Mary's ball. Or check it, a Patriots ball, Steve Hayes, to put it in. Substitution here for William Mary, bringing Ronnie Rabb in in their place of Bruce Ensley. Bruce Ensley's the best header of the ball for William Mary. And that could hurt them on corners and things of that nature. Patriots came pretty close there, Dick, to almost putting that one in. So Rab is in the ballgame, and he's been playing. As a matter of fact, when Bell was on suspension the early part of the year for disciplinary reasons, Rab was getting some time in his position, the striker position. Rab, by the way, uh, hails from Fairfax, a sophomore. You must have seen him a little bit in high school, uh, Dick. He's a nice player. He's done well for William Mary. Stevie Hayes is doing a real good job teaming up with Chris Meyer here on the right side, Bob. They've created a lot of chances. Here's another one here. And just wide. That was Bobby Lilly coming up from the back. We mentioned that once before. He has had a tremendous year for George Gordon Mason. George Gordon Bradley, uh, Dick, in his second year at George Mason, and his overall record, 25 wins, six defeats, and he's got a mess of ties, especially this year. Last year, he did not have any. This year, he's got five ties, which is a school record. Not something that they're necessarily proud of because they would like to have had a couple more victories, but they're still better than losses. It's a great effort by Doug Bradley to win that header there. Push from behind on uh, Tony Walsh. Knocking down number nine, Larkin. So we've only had one substitution so far with Rab coming in at Ensley's position, center midfield. And uh, for the Indians, putting this ball in play, number two, Summers Hambrick from La Jolla, California. This and this is not California weather today, at least not where he's from. It's pretty chilly out here. Number seven, Bell, with a centering pass, looking for Tuttle, pressure from behind. Or looking actually for Rapp, and, uh, and it'll be George Mason's ball. Walsh, down the uh, left side, on the wing to Sumo, trying to get past Hambrick. Beautiful play by Sumo, the foul by Lobdell. Labdell trying to keep it in play, and he was just too far inside to get a good pass. Sumo's down, and he may be hurt. A great play by William Hope Mary's not. sweeper, Steve Kakoulis, that time. He came out after Sumo had turned his man and got his foot in for a clear. Didn't clear it completely, but broke up a chance for Sam Sumo to get on, in on goal, and that's where he's dangerous. Sam Sumo, 32 goals in his uh, two years here at GMU. One of the most prolific two-year players at GMU, although he has two more years to go. The best goal scorer here since the days of Colin Kerr in the early 1980s. In fact, Sumo broke the GMU record last year with 24, but this year it's been a tough year for him. And the loss to the uh, pro leagues of Mike Reynolds and Freddie Thompson obviously didn't help the Patriots any. Tough to replace quality players like that. Just ask AU, they lost Michael Brady, the, one of the best players, maybe the best in the country last year. And he uh, finished his four years, and they haven't been the same since. And uh, for William & Mary, uh, number two, Hambrick. And it'll be, let's see, I believe it'll be Patriots ball, Bradley. Now they called obstruction that time, Bob, on Summers Hambrick uh, for William & Mary. It's a restart. This ball go into the back post from Doug Bradley. This is where they like to play most of these balls. Looking for the center for the Patriots. Getting a foot on it is Meyer, but he slips. We did have some rain earlier in the morning. A few hours more game time. That might have been the reason for the slip, although the field really isn't in too bad a shape for this time of year. And it's been used a lot between games and practice. The women play here against NC State coming up. You're going to see that game Thursday night on Media General. 
Channel 30 at 8 o'clock. Big game for the GMU women who have just about nailed down another NCAA bid. Kind of a just a formality here for women's soccer. And the men have had a lot of success, too. Three of the last four years, they've been in postseason play. Ray Alcesser, right side, Hayes. Meyer, a little long for Meyer. Now he comes back with the ball. Has it on the wing, but a whistle. And it's going to be the uh, Indians controlling. Called a handball on Chris Meyer tribe. that time. Kukulis from Potomac, Maryland. Back to Peter. Say a hand. Yes, they called a hand on Chris Meyer that right. time. He thought it was inadvertent, but the uh, linesman signaled for a handball, and the, and the ref blew the whistle for it. Long lead for El Cesar, tipped up by D'Antonio. El Cesar, nearest to the ball of the Patriots, Lobdell trying to get it past 17. Martin Taylor, another Fairfax player. Lobdell, lead for Sumo. Good defensive play that time by Kerkoulis. The freshman for Potomac. Saved, however, by Hat by El Cesar. Sumo. And for the tribe, number nine, Larkin. Clearing it out. A little long. Carter at midfield, but taken back by the Indians. This is Kakoulis again. He's a very confident, poised player. Now he's coming forward with the ball. Just a bit heavy that time for Ronnie Rabb to be effective with it. Doug Bradley. Nearest man to him is Rabb who would come in in place of Ensley, and it's Patriots ball. Bradley on the throw-in to Lilly. Looking upfield, Lilly has had an exceptional year, normally at the sweeper, but because Bell is in there today, an outstanding striker, he's been moved up this to stop her to try to stop is very him. dangerous coming forward. And he wa just was there. By the way, Bell had all three goals the other day against GW. As far as uh, Tuttle's uh, statistics, He's also had a good year. Two goals, five assists, but he has a lot of shots on goal. 56 shots on goal to lead his team. So he's not the most accurate player, but he's dangerous around that net. He gets some opportunities. 23.50 remaining first half, so we're just about halfway through of a scoreless game. And I know that GMU, of course, I guess you want to do this in any game, Dick, but I know especially today to try to break out of that scoring slump, GMU wanted to score early, hoping to catch William & Mary off guard in the early moments. It hasn't happened. They've come close a couple of times, but it looks like another one of those low-scoring, knockdown, drag-out games. Well, George Mason has definitely had the better of the play thus far, Bob. There's no question about it. And William & Mary's getting the most out of counterattacks like you just saw there, playing balls up to Scott Bell and John Tuttle. Last year's Patriot team averaged almost four goals a game for most of the season until late in the year when the schedule got extremely tough. And uh, they cooled off a little bit, but they still ended up with about three a game. And that's what Gordon Bradley likes to shoot for, a minimum of three a game. Excellent tackle there by Tony Walsh. Yes. Here's Number where William Mary's dangerous. John Tuttle is very, very clever Tuttle. with the ball. And he can beat people from that corner, as he just did. The header and nice play by Bradley. And a block by Doug Bradley. And Rab was in good position to get a shot on net. Bradley sacrificing his body a little bit there. And a fine play. It was a fine play by Doug because John Tuttle gave an excellent cross into the box. Martin Dunphy wasn't out on that ball. And there was a good chance for William Mary to pick up a, a, a shot and even a possibly a score. Coming into the midfield position, Bo SK, number 14, a junior from Mount Airy, Maryland for the Tribe. Play would not have gone. Mr. Dirk and the referee called a push on one of the William & Mary players. So that would not have been a chance even if it had slipped through. And Patriots controlling Dunphy who's only been in this country about three months. Within a month of his arriving from Ireland, Gordon Bradley found him in San Francisco, had his eye on him, and brought him here to George Mason to attend school. And what a find that's been. He, uh, the way he's played so far, and he's just a freshman, he could well be on his way to being the uh, finest goaltender in GMU history. And we've had some good ones here. Bobby Lilly there on the ball, Bob. He's been controlling much of the play. Giving a chance for Carter here. Lilly. 
Tribe controlling Rab, being pressured from behind. Good defensive play by Carter. Not allowing them to establish anything. D'Antonio for the Patriots. Good defensive effort by Steve D'Antonio that time. In on the tackle, Johnny Tuttle had some space. Steve recovered well. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Dunphy. And Meyer is pushed. The push by Bell, by Tuttle rather. And El Cesar put it in play for the Patriots. 2014 remaining of a scoreless game. Sumo being pressured, marked from behind by Hamrick. Good play by Hamrick. Sumo hitting the turf. Lilly, Meyer on the right side. Number five for the Indians, DeHaan working against Meyer. Taken Great. away by Wayman Mary. Great play by Ricky DeHaan that time. Yes. Hayes back on the right side working against SK. Check it against Sapinski. Hayes, the centering, in good position is Lobdell. And Lilly tries to keep the pressure on. Carter coming up from his sweeper position. This is where William and Mary's tribe. dangerous, Bob. They've got a counterattack, four against three. Yes, Greatly, Great play by Ian Carter to break that up. He stepped forward out of the back and cut off the through pass. Bit risky, but he made the play. And being pushed from behind is Bell, and the uh, violation is on Doug Bradley. Bell number seven for the Indians. We we're mentioning defensively, the Patriots had not given up any goals this year, and they haven't. Only uh, 10, but William & Mary hasn't given up many either. Carter on the header. Walsh and the Patriots on the attack. Lead by Lobdell. Left side, Sumo working against Hambrick. Hambrick doing a good job staying right with Sumo. Sumo's got to be a little bit quicker. Trying to lead the ball for Lobdell, but a little long. And you never know what that turf's going to do on a wet day. Good idea Peter. by Sam Sumo. Well cut off by Ian Peter. And Wayne Mary's allowed just 19 goals in 17 games of both <coughs> teams. Superb on defense. Last year, WM was 15 and 4. And GMU 18 and 4. Peter put it in play for the Indians. The Patriots have, I don't believe, have made a substitute. William Mary's come off the bench with both Rab and SK. And D'Antonio, Lilly, Antonio, a freshman. Good move. Easily getting past William Mary player. Meyer from Springfield. And you're going to see a special halftime feature on Chip Meyer, one of our outstanding local players, wide of the net, a little long. The nearest uh, William & Mary defender to it was Hambrick. The Indians do put it in play. Is this game going about the way you expected, Dick? Or? Bob, I expected it to be a little bit more wide open than this, and I've been very impressed by the defensive efforts of both teams. Martin Dunphy really hasn't had to make a difficult save yet for George Mason. Uh, Ian Peters had a couple reasonably difficult chances, which he handled very well, but the, the back four on each side has played very well in front of their keepers. Long kick. Number nine, Larkin, pushed from behind by Tony Walsh of the Patriots. Rab. Rab controlling out of Fairfax. Excellent tackle Larkin by also. Doug Bradley there, Bob. Superb. Sumo. Right side, Hayes. El Cesar, midfielder. Meyer playing a surprise forward position today. One of two strikers along with Sumo. Lovedell playing the wing for GMU. A tripping violation, and it's on William and Mary. And it'll be Patriots ball. SK, number 14 for William and Mary, had just come off the bench to play at midfield. I believe he had replaced Curran. Ball wide of the net. And William and Mary controlling. The Patriots have had more opportunities. Dumpy really has not had to make any sort of a difficult save so far, uh, Dick. No, he hasn't. But interesting enough, Bob, William Mary's had some fairly dangerous situations. Yeah. And if they can, can, can convert on a counterattack, they're going to present problems. Bell going high with Lilly. Carter, the sweeper. Back to Dunphy, the goalie. Good play by Dunphy. Rab is right there. He loses the ball, but he comes up with it. Okay. 
Extraordinary reactions yes. by Dunphy that time. His body was out of the area, and he had the presence of mind yeah. to keep the ball inside the area so it wouldn't be a handball. D'Antonio, Bradley. D'Antonio coming up from his defender position. Pressure from behind by Meyer. Good move from behind. Walsh keeping the pressure on. The forwards have to come back a little bit and help out. And that's what Meyer did. Carter skying that time with number five, DeHaan. And Dumphy will take this one. This is about as close as Wave Mary has really come to a strong shot on goal and a good play by Dumphy. He's very, very secure, he, Bob. He, he's an outstanding goalkeeper. I understand he made a save against Madison 10 days ago when the Patriots won 1-0. Gordon Bradley said after the game, it was a world-class save in anybody's league. He leaped high, in the could have gone in the corner of the net, and he grabbed the ball out of midair rather than just punching it away. And, you know, when you don't score a lot, Dick, you need that kind of a goaltender. You You're only going to score one or he's two a game. you got to get those kind of saves. He's been the difference in their season. Yeah. An average goalie, the season probably would have been over for GMU. Made a bit of a mistake there, Bob. He didn't really get that ball when he came out, and uh, William Mary almost well, had a real good chance from it. Not perfect, I guess. Carter, he's still a freshman, too. You can imagine what this kid's going to be like when he's a senior. It's good enough. And the pros right. may try to get him before then. It's good enough right now. Yeah, he Very might be good. playing first division soccer in Europe before his four years are over at GMU. You never William, know. William and Mary is putting a lot more pressure on now. And this is where they're dangerous when they really apply that pressure and put the defense under duress. Called a foul right. on John Tuttle for pushing. Tuttle, uh, another of the Fairfax players in the lineup for William and Mary. They've had three. They started the game today. And another from Burke. So they, uh, this is a hotbed of recruiting. It's tougher for the Patriots to keep some of these kids at home than it is for schools out of the area like William and Mary in uh, Virginia where the kids want to go away to school. Sumo on the header. It's taken back by Hambrick. Number two for WM. Seven is Bell on the left side, but cleared away by Lilly, the stopper. Right side to D'Antonio, who hails from Long Island. In the middle is El Cesar. Right side, Meyer. Hayes coming up. From the stopper position, Lilly, or rather Bradley, from the full left fullback spot, the team captain, number eight, Doug Bradley. Right side, a little wide. We have 13.30 left, first half. Remember, it's two 45-minute halves, and then if it's a tie, we automatically have two 10-minute halves of an overtime. Regardless of how many goals are scored, you play the whole 20 minutes. And the Patriots have had their share of them, seven overtimes out of their 14 games this year. So they're used to going 110 minutes. Both of these teams are quite fit, Bob. I don't think fitness yeah. will be a factor in the game at all. It's a matter this of, time of year, the chances. This time of year, though, uh, Dick, after you've been training for over two months and playing games, uh, I guess you do. 100% ready is, means a little different in late October than it does in September, doesn't sure. it? You got to go with the bruises and the, the sore feet and... You got to learn to play with those injuries. Speaking so. of bruises, a hard tackle by <laughs> Ray Alcesser winning that ball from Darcy Curran there. Curran. Number four for the uh, Tribe. On the throw in. For WM, Larkin, number nine. And number five is DeHaan, the Swedish player. And it'll be Patriots ball. Buck, Doug Bradley on the throw in, a senior. He's had a couple of big goals in his career. Sam Sumo, right side Meyer. Meyer being pressured a little bit, being marked tightly by Sapinski, number 15 from Springfield, right side. It's Hambrick working against Sumo, the Patriots. Hambrick in the dark green for William and Mary. Very, very impressed by William and Mary's defense. They've been very consistent and very reliable. William, uh, yep. George Mason's had a better of the play in the middle of the field thus far, but the William and Mary back four has held up ever so well. William Mary's had some big victories. They went out west to the uh, Nevada Las Vegas tournament a few weeks back and won a couple of big ones out there. Lobdell, Walsh, lead for Sumo, trying to get Sam in position. Won't be able to save this one. Sam has pressed a lot, and Gordon Bradley recently has thought about benching him a little bit, giving good, him a rest. Good see play what by happen. Ian Peter that last time, coming out even though the ball was played wide of the area. On the header, Bell. Carter from behind. Nice play by Sumo. Lilly. 
Lilly. Working against Larkin, Fairfax, Lilly from Carlisle, PA, for the Patriots. Probably as good a defensive player as GMU has had this year. He's been a standout, Bob. He's been the key to their defensive season, just holding them together wherever they want him. Today, playing in a new position, I think he's been the he's most dominant player out He's played all over the place, everything but goalie, hasn't he? And Peter, good bounce there for the Tribe. That was a set play, a flick on from Bruce Lobdell's head at the near post, and Ian Peter read it well. Bradley on the header. D'Antonio in the middle to El Cesar, but it's taken back by DeHaan. For the Indians, on the attack now. Bell, looking right side to Rav. Left side, he's got Tuttle on the wing. Great but here comes by Scotty Antonio. Bell that time. Great pass, he saw it. It was well-bred by Steve D'Antonio, Bob. Sumo, Sumo gets a break there and gets past. But no, we're going to have a violation here. I guess they had a tripping call there. And uh, number uh, two, Hambrick, doing his job, staying with Sumo, just... The key to stopping a sumo or a bell, just keep them a little off balance. Stay with them. Don't let them get past you. Always, you always want to stay between the goal and, or what, what should I say, between the ball and the other team striker, right? What we say is goal side, Bob, staying right. between your player and the goal. William Mary thus far hasn't been as effective on attack as they should be. I like to see them to be more effective, play more balls into their forwards' feet. Their forwards aren't big, but they're very quick and very clever. If they continue and to play the balls up top in the air, Dick they're coming up have limping, trouble. Coming up limping for the Patriots, Ray Alcesser, midfielder, I believe that is number four. Gordon Bradley may have to go to the bench here. Is Alcesser going to stay in and walk this one off? I don't know. We're scoreless here with 8.58 left in the first half. George Mason and William and & Mary, and we'll be back in just a moment. This bud's for all that you do. Carlos, I need 100 of these by Friday. My friend, I'm retired. My son is running the business now. Oh. You know just where you're going. It's true, your pride is showing cause you, you make America work and this bud's for you. Here's to you, Beechwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This bud's for you. I'm hard to please when it comes to cars. At times, I do go for luxury. Sometimes economy. Weekends, I want something sporty, but I never want to spend a lot of money. That's why I always go to budget rent a car because Budget has a great selection of cars at low budget prices. So I can get the car I want, or the van, at a budget price. And we're back in now, and Chip Meyer on the header, Peter. Long pass intended for Curran, playing a midfield. Curran, the lead pass for Bell. Nice pass intended there, almost. They almost pulled that one off to DeHaan. Good Larkin, number nine Carter. for Weaver Mary. Good play by El Cesar. Well, he walked off his bad leg in a hurry. Lobdell coming up. El Cesar overran the ball a little bit, or was hoping, I guess, for a lead pass. Centering. Hayes! And a goal. Great nice play by Hayes. By Ray Alcesser and a great effort by Hayes. Ian Peter positioned well at the near post to make the save. Best chance of the day thus far. And action at uh, midfield between Alcesser, or rather uh, between D'Antonio and Tuttle. Bell over his head, taken back by Ian Carter. Dunphy. Seven and a half minutes left, first half, scoreless. Patriots have had the better of the going. The goalies have been more than up to the task so far. Dunphy on the header is Meyer, push from behind. Carter, Bell, left side, Curran, centering pass, a little far. Gonna be taken on the right side by Rab. William and Mary. 4-0 in CAA play. The Patriots 3-0-2. GMU needs a win more than William & Mary does. 
if the Patriots win this game and then beat Richmond in their final league game, then they could come up with a championship and go to the NCAA tournament. For the uh, Indians, Sapinski, left side, Tuttle. Tuttle being pressured, a good defensive play by D'Antonio, not wanting Tuttle to get a centering pass off. Down to six and a half left, first half. Media General bringing you George Mason, men's soccer here. Women's soccer coming up Thursday night. Yours truly, uh, Bob Gotkin and Richard Broad will be back here at the George Mason Stadium to bring you George Mason at NC State. Thus far, Steve D'Antonio is doing a superb job shutting down John Tuttle. John Tuttle, local boy from Fairfax, the catalyst for the William Mary yeah. offense, and Steve D'Antonio has prevented him from getting the ball and turning and taking him on he, for the most part. Nick, he came into this game with 56 shots on goal in 17 games, and he hasn't even been close to getting a shot off in this game. He's been spending more time out of bounds. So you know D'Antonio Antonio is doing a fine job trying to get it in play. Number three, Kakoulis from Potomac, centering for DeHaan. Carter on the header for the Patriots, number 21. Hayes gets it out to Meyer, and the Patriots on the attack now. Hayes in the middle. Hayes, a midfielder, left side to Walsh. Another midfielder for the Patriots, and Peter coming way out of the net. Now, is that a smart gamble in that situation, Dick? Well, he succeeded in it, Bob, but it was a gamble, no question. Yeah. He did have time to read the situation. Here's Meyer. The play. Uh, if he doesn't get to that ball, or at least get a good foot on it, Patriots score easily. That's how far out Peter came. He came, what, about 40 yards out of the net that time. Five minutes remaining, first half. Peter taking his time. William and Mary would probably take a tie at halftime, and uh, it wouldn't be uh, anything to worry about for them to leave this field with a tie. It's the, because the Patriots already have two lead ties. It's GMU that needs that victory even more. At the same point, Bob. George Mason's uh, got to be happy with the way they've played. They've controlled play, been the yes. better side in the half, and they just want to keep that up, not try to do anything drastic or irrational to alter that. Sumo being pressured from behind is Bell by number 21, Carter. Coming out of the stack is Hayes. Well, the Patriots left side, a little long for Walsh, but on the wing is Bradley. Gets past Sumo, but a nice lead, however, for... Lilly and oh, great defensive play that time. Nice Actually, just, just common sense by Hambrick to stay down. Walsh and it's William and Mary's ball. I thought the Patriots had something to go in there. You can see that what George Mason is really going all out. Bobby Lilly, a defender, has been coming forward throughout the entire match. As another example of it that time. And when he comes forward, Ian Carter will pick up Scott Bell. Yes. Now, those two are playing pretty much in tandem. They're shifting responsibilities. Bobby Lilly, if he's there, will take Bell, and Carter will play behind him. But Ian Carter has a lot of responsibility for Bell as well. Hambrick. Little long intended for number 20 for the try. Bruce Ensley is back in the game out of Burke. We have long brings limp. Steve Kakoulis over again to take this throw in. It's an important weapon when you have someone with a long throw in and you get that ball can, that can drop in the box. If they can get a score now before the end of the half, it's going to be very difficult psychologically for George Mason to get back in it. I think could probably go for either team in this game. One nothing could be a very big lead with uh, these kind of defensive teams. Knocked out of bounds by Dunphy. 3-12 remaining first half. Good situation here for William Mary to get something going. By the way, Rab came out of the ball game. He's replaced by match. Bruce Ensley, who's now at the back post, the best uh, header of the ball for William and Mary. And that's just where you'd want post. the best header to be, Dick? It all depends on what type of play you're trying. But this and one here looks like it. it's going for Ensley, but they didn't get it quite over that far. And Dumpy did his job in that situation. You want that goalie to get off his feet, get up and grab that ball. Sumo being pressured by two tribesmen. He was getting pressure from behind by Larkin and by Ensley. Sumo. Out of bounds off uh, Al Cesar, and I believe it'll be Patriots ball. Or, or rather, a W&M ball. And from behind, Al Albert, in his 16th year as William & Mary head coach, led him to NCAA tournament bids in 1980 and 83, and wants the CAA championship now. Patriots haven't lost in Fairfax to William & Mary in eight years, and uh, have beaten them uh, the last two years overall. Dunphy. The shot taken by number five, DeHaan, their leading goal scorer. 
Martin Dunphy's strength as a goalkeeper, his ability to control the area. He's very experienced and anticipates the play very well. Sumo, the Patriots' top goal scorer in the middle. Meyer getting his first start at striker. They're playing with two up front. Men for the, pa the Patriots playing with three forwards, two of them strikers to get more offense going. Centering pass, and Peter made the wise move there. He almost had to come out in that situation, or it would have been an excellent opportunity for Lilly. Carter. El Cesar, a slight crosswind. So far, it hasn't affected the ball too much. Lilly, number five, DeHaan. Now, William and Mary have a chance to counter if they can He's do it quickly, and they didn't. They wasted the opportunity then. Bell being pressured by El Cesar, tries to push him off the ball. And the violation is on the Patriots. Down to 112 left first half. This may be a scoreless first half. Nothing new for GMU. They scored early in their last match against AU, but then AU came back late in the game to tie it up. <clears throat> Temperature right now about uh, 50 at GMU. It's chilly, and we had some rain before this contest. Centering pass by Hambrick. Good opportunity for the Tribe. Great save by Dunphy. From our angle, I don't know if that would have been wide or not had he not touched it, Dick, but it was still a good save. It was a good save. He covered the near post ever so well that time. Carter. Sumo. Number 20, Ensley. DeHaan at midfield, El Cesar, 20 seconds left, first half. One opportunity, perhaps. Wall, centering play to Sumo, but a good play by Hambrick. Patriots ball and, and try to get it to play very quickly. And to George Gordon. Mason there. I'm really surprised at that call. William Mary's just taking their time. Yeah, they back, may not get so the, see down to six seconds left, and I don't think he's saying now to stop the clock. And Walter, it's illegal for them, isn't it, Dick, to just stand around when there's a violation and not let the Patriots get the shot off? What it would be would be ungentlemanly conduct, which would be worthy of a, of a yellow card or yeah. a caution. I wasn't sure about the call, Bob, in that particular case. I thought it was a clean play made by William Mary. If we had a chance to see it again. We, we would, we might be able to get a better look at this. But this is obviously a dangerous situation. George Mason has several people who can hit powerful shots. Tony Walsh has a tremendous left foot, and if he connects with one, yeah. he could send them in 1-0 at halftime. Well, Walsh has used that left foot this year to score two goals and had six assists and 29 shots on net. Walsh has not had a game winner, but one goal just might be a game winner in this type of match. Both Let's see uh, if he'll take the shot. Both Walsh and Bradley, Bradley have powerful shots with the left foot. El Cesar and Lilly with the right foot. This will be a direct shot. They won't. They may play it off the side, but they're going to get a shot from this. And it's El Cesar who takes the shot, and it's deflected by the Indians. So that's going to do it here in the first half. 45 minutes of play. The Patriots had the better of the going, certainly for the first 35 minutes. Then Wave Mary came back, shifted the momentum a little bit. But so far, we're scoreless. The Patriots have more shots on net, but we've got another big 45 minutes to go in the CAA matchup. Wave Mary and George Mason at zero. You're watching Media General Cable Sports, and we'll be back. Way here the second. Way here the second half. First half statistics: Patriots had 10 shots on goal, four saves for Ian Peter, the Wave and Mary goalie. Wave and Mary only had two shots on the Patriot goal, and Martin Dumpy only had to make one save. Fouls eight on GMU, 11 on Wave and Mary. So it's been a very physical game. Corner kicks for the Patriots two, Wave and Mary five. Patriots have had more opportunities overall, though with the more corner kicks, the so Wave and Mary has had a couple of chances. Again, uh, setting the scene for you, William & Mary is 4-0 in CAA play, while George Mason's 3-0-2. The Patriots are 7-2-5 overall. William & Mary is 13-4, coming off a 3-1 non-conference win over GW. George Mason with an important 1-1 tie in a league game against AU. And Martin Dumphy, and early on, William & Mary getting a little uh, something going, perhaps. Good chance for William Mary. Ricky DeHaan, their center midfielder, didn't quite get all of his head to that ball. Otherwise, they might have been up 1-0. Knocked away. Patriots controlling. Number 17 for William and Mary is Martin Taylor. Out of the corner, Bruce Lobdell playing the left wing. Resetting uh, the uh, lineups for you as they started the game for William & Mary. Hambrick is the stopper. Kakulis, number three, is the sweeper. Uh, the uh, fullbacks are Sapinski, 15, Taylor, 17. And uh, in the midfield, Curran 
and to Han, Larkin, and Ensley. And up front, Bell and Tuttle for WM. For the Patriots, the goalie is Dumphy. Lilly is the stopper, and the sweeper is Ian Carter. In the backfield, Bradley and D'Antonio. The midfield, Alcesser, Walsh and Hayes, and up front, Meyer, Lovdell, and Sumo. Al Albert, the Wave and Mary coach, and Gordon Bradley, the coach of the Patriots. In his second year, Albert's been 16 years at Wave and Mary, and as Richard mentioned at the top of the telecast, uh, Albert, a Wave and Mary graduate. So it's his alma mater he's coaching every week. He's been there for a long time, Al Albert has, and he's done a consistently good job. It's an outstanding program. Here's a dangerous chance, but William Mary again, very persistent on defense and denying Sam Sumo a chance to get a really good opportunity. And the Patriots controlling, and it's Bradley inbounds. Carter with a centering pass to Sumo. A little long. Ensley and a fine save by Peter. It's a Sumo world did credit class ball. save by Ian Peter. That ball was hit low and to the post, and I was sure it was in. And he went down and dove. And it's a very difficult save, especially for a big fellow like Ian Peter. He's a good athlete, and he really got to that ball quickly. Alcesser had the most shots of any player in the first half before GMU midfielder. That's Sumo second. Patriots control. And it's going to be Doug Bradley out of the corner. That's the Patriots' third corner kick of the contest. Ian Peters a little bit shaken up after yes. making that save. And William and Mary is warming up Lance Holland, I think, their backup keeper on the sidelines. And we're going to uh, warm you up with this commercial message. The game is scoreless. William and Mary, George Mason, 41-40 to go. And you're watching George Mason Soccer on Media General Cable Sports. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Bob Gotkin, and tonight we're talking banking with Ken Trout, Senior Regional Executive of the Bank of Virginia, a major sponsor of George Mason University basketball. Bob, we feel businesses expect their bank to be a financial partner, someone that's knowledgeable and responsive, and brings to the table as a partner a broad range of expertise in the area of finance. Frankly, we're a service organization made up of people and don't want to be perceived as a gray stone building. We firmly believe that banking relationships are built on people, not institutions. As a partner, our people work in tandem with business executives in developing financial strategies that maximize company resources. In our opinion, today's business customers expect and require a broad range of sophisticated services and products. Change has been a key word at Bank of Virginia and will continue to be so in the future. And hopefully, just like George Mason University, we will be constantly changing for the better. Bank of Virginia, it's worth making the change. Member FDIC. Bob Gotkin and Richard Broad returning to the George Mason Soccer Stadium. Time back in, and Ian Peter, who was injured on the last play, the shot by Sumo on his save is staying in the lineup. He will not come out. I thought Lance Holland would have come in the ball, uh, come in the uh, soccer match. 41-26 left. And remember, if they're tied after regulation, we have a 20-minute overtime, something the Patriots have made a habit of this year. That's a thing we want to look at, Bob, the fact that, that <clears throat> Ian Peter was shaken up while making that save. George Mason can put some pressure on him. They may be able to take advantage yeah. of that and get an equalizing goal. Here's already a sumo. situation. Harassing him a little bit. In order to do that, while uh, perhaps Peter may have some more cobwebs in his head, the Patriots are going to have to put that pressure on real quick before Peters can... Uh, or Peter, rather, can regain himself. They're calling this fact because the ball didn't go completely outside the area. I think William Mary is wise just to knock the ball long up the field, give Ian Peter a chance to yes, it's uh, Hambrick. get his equ equilibrium back. But number 20, Meyer, controlling. Centering pass for Sumo, trying to get a shot off. He just couldn't do it. Not in a good position to get the shot off, at least trying to maintain control. Excellent pass in by Chris Meyer. We had him as a halftime piece. One of the things about Chris is he's not a flashy player, but he does the simple things, and he's a good athlete, and there was an example of it. He played a great ball into Sam Sumo that Sam just couldn't quite control in close enough, and the ball went out of touch. And Chris is a senior out of Springfield. Sat out one year with an injury. 
Alcesser pr pressuring Bell at midfield. Alcesser controlling. In the first half, Bob Lilly won an awful lot of those balls flighted up down the middle by William Mary. And that was a big statistic, that too. Again. It is important that he gets that chance. And Dunphy. Great again. shot by Kakoulis and Martin Dunphy, as he's been all year, equal to the challenge. Dunphy clearing. Midfield. We'll see if the Patriots win this one. Nope. Five to Han for WM. They're in the green shirts, white pants. Left side, El Cesar. The centering to Meyer. He wants a shot at it. He's going to have to. Nope, not quite. Hayes. And it's wide. Meyer really wanted that one. You could just tell, but he couldn't quite get in the position there, Dick, to let that one go. Good choice by Chris Meyer, though, Bob. Played the ball back to Stevie Hayes, who had a much better shot coming and striking the ball straight on. He didn't connect with it, but a good decision by Chris Meyer and a worthwhile chance by George Mason. Getting ready to center it. Number 15, Sapinski out of Springfield. Up the field for W&M. This is Larkin, number nine from Fairfax. Straight on, a little high, and there's no way Duffy would have been able to stop that one, but it wasn't on net. And Good try by Tim Larkin, although I think he might have looked down the other side and played a ball into Johnny Tuttle at the left wing. William and Mary has not used John Tuttle very much. Steve D'Antonio has shut him down, but I think William and Mary, if they look to go to him, he's the kind of guy who can create problems for the George Mason defense. And D'Antonio Meyer playing a striker position for the first time probably in his career. GMU, D'Antonio, DeHaan, Larkin pressuring Doug Bradley, number eight, the team captain for GMU, who clears into WM territory. And here's Alcesser in midfield, leading both teams in shots taken today. Alcesser good at creating a lot of opportunities from Hanwell, England. 18 to Antonio. He hails from Long Island, New York. A good soccer area. Long Ball. Island University, one of the best soccer schools in the country almost every year. Ball won there by Ricky DeHaan. I think they might have gotten away with a handball, George Mason, that time. On the corner, Hayes playing the midfield. He was hooked by Ensley and the save to Peter. 37-27 remaining in over to, in uh, regulation, rather. The Patriots lately, though, with all the ties they've had and games going into overtime, almost look at games as 110 minutes, not 90. Yeah. Peter taking his time. Taylor William and Mary at this point, again, they can handle a tie okay record-wise, and they wouldn't mind leaving the field right now and uh, take a 0-0 verdict. They can't win it. In the middle, Sumo. For check it, that was Carter. And Tuttle trying to get something going for his team. And a great opportunity for Bell just wide. There was a chance. Dumpy took the gamble. Remember in the first half, Dick, when Peter came out, Dumpy did almost the exact same thing. And Bell was coming in from a tough angle, and that turf is a little loose today. He might have slipped. Well, it was a slightly different situation, Bob. This time, John Tuttle put Scott Bell through. He did the right thing to, be, to beat Dunphy. He had to shoot quickly and just couldn't quite get a grip on that ball if, to turn it as much as he wanted. If that ball had eyes, then I'll tell you, that ball is the Patriot rooter. <laughs> because uh, the Patriots were dead ducks on that play. Again, you can see how dangerous John Tuttle is and how much he adds to that attack. Bob, Ian Peter is really hurting, if you can watch in the sideline. He is limping Seems badly. Seems to be straining in there. But and it's obviously such an important game, and he's logged all but uh, 65 minutes of playing time this year for William & Mary. So it's pretty obvious, Dick, that uh, all the confidence in the world is what Albert has put in uh, Ian Peter. And a less than 100% Peter, he must feel at this point, is uh, better than anything he's got on the bench. They do have confidence in him. You've got an inj injured George Mason player down here. Looks like uh, uh, Ray Alcester. Sesser, he went down in the first half, too, and came up limping. Fortunately, Ray is okay, and uh, he's tough. He'll stay in. I admire a lot of these soccer players. I tell you, unless they lose a leg out there, they don't want to come out. And then they'd probably try to hop around on one leg. It's an important decision Al Albert has now because Ian Peter is hurting. Look how he injured his hip making that one save. And trying to clear it out is Ensley from Burke, Virginia, number 20. You can see even there, he was hobbling and limping yes, he coming is. out to that ball. he's doubling over in pain. 
Now, if you're not to second guess, but if you see a, a player like that, uh, Dick, do you do you make a substitution? Well, it looks like they are warming Lance Holland yeah. up on the sidelines. You're right. Now. I don't think they have any choice. Bob, he's only at this played point. 35 minutes this year and has only played in two games. Holland, the backup goalie, but you're right, Dick. They probably don't have a choice at this point because it may cost them the game if uh, the pain is too much for uh, Peter when he's trying to make a save or something. <laughs> Nice move by Larkin, number nine from Fairfax to get away from Doug Bradley. Right side is Bo S.K. back in the game from Mount Airy, Maryland. Centering pass, but Carter, Ian Carter from Mississauga, Canada, number 21, the Patriots sweeper. His role to clear out that goal area. We've got an and injured player yes. down, Bob. It's Steve Kakoulis, the William Mary sweeper back. They can ill afford to lose him. He's this a, game's getting physical. <laughs> it's been a physical game, and it's getting more so. But William and Mary, just as they don't want to lose Ian Peter, they don't want to lose Steve Kakoulis. I didn't see the injury. I didn't see what happened, but he's down. He looks like he's really quite banged up. And we're going to take a break right here and hope for the best for the injured William and Mary player. And you may also see in the corner of your screen there uh, the William Mary goalie down again. This may be a chance for him to work his bad right leg. It's scoreless, and you're watching George Mason Soccer on Media General Cable Sports. Whoop. Give us a call and we'll bring over the best pizza in town. Honest. And sweeper. Bob Gotkin and Richard Bod returning to George Mason and uh, the Wave and Mary sweeper. An outstanding player, Steve Kukulis from Potomac, Maryland, has hurt his right ankle. And he limped off the field. However, they're keeping the goalie, and Peter may even be in worse shape in the game. Now, who would be the sweeper now for William and Mary? Uh, would it be Rab, the substitute, uh, Dick? Bob, they've taken Ricky DeHaan, the center midfielder, and, and moved, him back. moved him back to sweeper. But, but he's their leading goal scorer. Isn't that a dangerous move? They do at, that? He's got eight point, goals. you lose a player like Steve Kukulis, you really have got to be safe and, and secure, and especially playing on, on, concentrate the, on, defense. on the opposition's home field. And George Mason putting as much pressure on as they have. They're putting DeHaan at the sweeper back. They're working on Kukulis on the sideline. It looks like he may be finished for the game. Now, will the Patriots, if they get the opportunity, could Sumo have a little more freedom? Well, they won't change the marking on Sumo because no. uh, Kukulis is the free player. And... Um, Ricky DeHaan will be the free player, but it's a different situation now. Timmy Larkin's right. going well, right now. Field. Right now, William Mary's on yeah, the attack, the and if they could get a goal with one of their best players, Kukulis, out of the lineup, what a boost that would be. In this game, I really think one goal is going to win this soccer game. It's just my observation, perhaps yours, if you've been with us all the way. It's a good defensive game. A Sapinski, number 15, left side to Rab. Well, Rab's probably gone to the, or check it, it's SK. Sapit and uh, Ensley. It's a handball on Chris Meyer. Meyer that time, and Mr. Durkin, the official, called it. Yes, the uh, head referee is Walter Durkin. The linesman is Dirk Vanderloo, and the lines and uh, the other linesman is Dirk Oxblow. It's Mike Oxman. I thought we had a lot of Dirks out here. Yeah, my color commentator is Dirk Broad, and I'm Dirk Gottkin. <laughs> Here comes Dumpy, and he's got that one. And on the ground in front of him was Bell, their striker. That's who what he does very well, Martin Dunphy. Read the game and play to his area, play his area very well. He uh, 
Dumphy feels that his advantage over most of the opposite goalies, the American goalies on these other teams, is that he does see the field, he reads the game, he knows more about the game a little bit better from his uh, background in Ireland. Absolutely true. And he helps his defense. He feels he he's a big factor in the way the defense plays. Not to be cocky, but he feels like he can help orchestrate them a little bit with his experience. There's William and Mary coming for it, Bob. They push Ricky DeHaan, the sweeper, into the attack to see if he can add something. And D'Antonio, Patriots trying to get it going here. They have not really had an opportunity in this uh, second half. William and Mary has had all the opportunities, and the best probably in the game was with Dumphy coming about 40 yards out of the goal to the right side and slipping down, missing the ball, allowing Bell to come in on the left wing. He had an open net, but it was a tough angle, and he uh, missed the net by, oh, maybe a yard or so. And that happened about eight minutes into the half. We now have 31.09 left in regulation. And a violation on SK and number 11 Hayes hitting the turf for the Patriots. It'll be GMU's ball, I believe. I think they, no, I think they called a handball on, a hand on George uh, on, Mason? On Stevie Hayes. Oh, okay. And so it'll be William and Mary taking the restart. 15, Sapinski out of Springfield. Putting the ball in play. On a chilly, cloudy, rainy day. In Fairfax, we had rain earlier. Don't forget, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, right here on Channel 30, your home for George Mason Sports. It'll be GMU's women's team, number six in the country against NC State, also a top 10 team. NC State is not lost to George Mason. So we know the Lady Patriots ought to be uh, ready for that one. Sapinski out of bounds. Clucky had that one headed for the lower soccer field over beyond the Bank of Virginia and Domino's Pizza signs across the way. I think you're right, Bob. It looks like one goal will do this game. And yes. the loss of Kukulis has got to be an important factor. Yes. It's really going to hurt. And the Patriots, and Patriots will have to take advantage of that, try to exploit that weakness. Not only will it hurt him in the back end, Ricky DeHaan will do a good job as the sweeper. Here's a All chance. Right. Tuttle. Tuttle in a great position. No, no goal there. Whistle we got an, off, we have an offside. Sides. Yes. That was an yeah. interesting call. The player was originally in the offside position, but the ball was not played. And then when it was drawn back, I'm not so sure that he was still in the same offside position. <coughs> Al Albert is quite upset about the call, and I think he has a considerable justification to be um, displeased. That might have been his best opportunity right there. But the Patriots knew it was offside on somebody because they just stopped playing there. Number two, that Summers point. Hambrick, who just won that header, has done a really good job a shutting down Sumo, Sam yeah. Sumo. Sumo clearing back. Patriots try to get something going here. They have not been able to put any pressure on Peter, who's been hurting after making a save early in the second half, nor have they been able to exploit uh, the weakness left by the absence of Kukulis, the outstanding sweeper for Wave and Mary. If the Patriots don't have the ball, it doesn't really make a difference who's hurting for Wave and Mary. So far, WM's done a good job. Sometimes, Dick, the opposite can happen. The other players come in and everybody works harder. Good play by Peter. He didn't look hurt there. Knocking down Lily. Carter. Meyer. Hayes, number 10, Tuttle, and WM on the attack now. Hensley slowing it up. Lead for SK, but Hayes picks it off. Excellent play by Stevie Hayes. Put George Mason back into the attack. Meyer in the middle to El Cesar, who has four shots on goal in this game. Good play by Lobdell to position the ball. Hayes, 28-13 left to regulation. Fine defensive play by Hensley to knock it away. And WM getting it's it back now. Tuttle. Situation, Bob. It's three versus Tuttle two. Tuttle right on Tuttle. the way. Having two players. Carter. And if he just could have switched that ball, he might have either found Scotty Bell or Ronnie Rabb on the right side. Rabb had to come in in place of Kakulis. Rabb uh, earlier replaced uh, Ensley. So he's kind of their all purpose player. He's all over the place. And uh, is DeHaan, DeHaan is now playing the sweeper, correct? Definitely. Yes, he is. So Don he's a kind of out of position for his goal scoring abilities, but well, as he's a, a good as a player. player in Sweden, Bob, that's where uh, Rick DeHaan played, but they needed him in the midfield. And this is where William Mary will suffer without having him in the midfield. Although, oddly enough, Dick, since they made the switch, they've got more offensive opportunities than they had most of the game. Most of these have been from counter-attacking chances, Bob, and that's where I think William Mary's going to have to do it. And good play there by, Great play by Tony, Tony Walsh. Walsh. 
Walsh has a rocket of a foot, as uh, Richard was commenting on in the first half. We just wish he could uh, get it in position to, so we could see it. Good play coming in on the right side by Larkin. And that's out. And the uh, tempo, I think the intensity has picked up a little bit more in this half, uh, Dick. Got another substitution for William Mary. Number 12, Connor Farley's coming on, taking Bo SK's place. He'll be and moving to the right side. Timmy, Timmy Larkin back to the left. Al Albert is substituted quite frequently. He's got a lot of freshmen, and he moves them in and out quite, quite Connor, um, often. Connor Farley's a sophomore from Wayne, Pennsylvania. Ian Carter pressured from behind by Bell. Good move. Scotty Bell went around Ian Carter that time and got his shoulder in and forced Ian Carter to hold or obstruct him. And now William Mary is getting a restart. William Mary keeps getting these restarts, these corners, these attacking third restarts. They might just get one and they're going to be dangerous. And here's a header there, Dumpy. A little wide. The header taken by Tuttle. Hasn't had a lot of chances today. Dumpy will clear. Dumpy's made a couple of big plays for the Patriots, but the uh, GMU midfield, I think, has done an especially good job defensively. And taken away from behind by Ensley. Bell, great save by Dunphy. Now, was Dunphy in just the position where he wanted to be that time for that shot, Dick? He was in great position. He still made a great save to Bruce. Yes. He is a one fabulous goalkeeper. I've that never was. seen that a better one in college soccer. That probably the save of the game so far. Save. Yes, it was. But he's used to making that. And the Patriots offense has been in a slump since about the uh, fifth game of the year. That's before we last brought you the uh, George Mason Clemson game. And since that time, they've only scored eight goals still. Uh, and again, this is, I guess, tremendous credit to the defense of the Patriots. Still, they have not lost in their last 12 games. Well, you see one of the reasons why. Yes, Bob, there it is. Fell in the orange jersey at the Mr. end. Mr. MVP for this team. Has been fabulous. William & Mary on the attack, centering play, and again, Dunphy, a tunnel was right there should Dunphy have faltered in any way. Midfield, Sapinski. This time, William & Mary's taking it to the Patriots a lot more. They've had more opportunities, restarts, as Dick has mentioned, and other opportunities than they had the entire first half. And we still have 24-30 to play in regulation. Maybe the Patriots are tiring a little bit, either that or William & Mary's just decided, hey, we're gonna go out and win this game. WM first place in the CAA, the Patriots Here's second a place. Chance it's a two-team race. Tuttle. Here comes Tuttle, and, he and he's pushed off by, by Lilly. And that was probably a good play by Lilly to save a, a very dangerous situation. So it was John Tuttle had Bobby Lilly beat. And even though you don't want to give a foul in that area, well, far better Dumpy, than letting I'll take him my in chance. the back. <laughs> well, as Dumpy's playing goal, uh, Dick, I'll take my chances back there. We saw him in his very first start here at Media General against Clemson. And at that time, we knew the Patriots had something. Anytime you hold Clemson scoreless, you've turned in a fine day's work. And since that time, he has played just as well. And a Another good defensive play by Bradley. Tremendously dangerous boy, you're right. Great defense by Bradley, staying with DeHaan. Uh, Ricky DeHaan. Now, should DeHaan as a sweeper be in a position like that? Up well, that far? they like to bring him forward. He is a free player, Bob, and he can get forward on that if he wishes. Moving, moving on the right side for WM is number 12, Connor Farley. He's just come in the game out of Wayne PA, sophomore. But Walsh clears for GMU at midfield is Taylor, Martin Taylor, number 17 from Fairfax. This Wayne and Mary team is an excellent example of just how good the talent is around here. Because many of their top players are right here from right here in Northern Virginia, and they are one of the better teams in this region. That's for sure. Carter, long play, left side, Lobdell, working one-on-one -on -one against DeHaan, now it's sweeper in place of Kukulis, knocked away, here comes Hayes. Great play by Ricky DeHaan, no question, he can play in the sweeper position. Number five, where they might miss him again is in the midfield. And Lilly, uh, might have been injured there, but he's okay, he was knocked down. Again, if you notice, Bob, when Ian Peter came out for that ball, he is hobbling, he either suffered a <laughs> severe bruise or possibly even a pulled muscle in his hip area, and he doesn't have that quickness. And but Al looks, Albert's taking a big chance in keeping him on, but he does have confidence in him. But it looks like uh, the uh, William & Mary, the midfield, the defenders are working just that much harder to protect uh, 
to protect Peter because he hasn't had to work nearly as hard since the injury as he did before the injury. They really have picked up the level, and I yes. think this is a tribute to William Mary's pride. Number five for the Patriots is Bob Lilly, playing the stopper today. His a job is to mark. chance with Scott Bell. Bell, and here is Bell's opportunity to get a save by Duffy. And Duffy coming out, but another opportunity and a goal. And we'll see who got that. Was that uh, Timmy Larkin, I believe? Larkin, number nine from Fairfax. And boy, I imagine his folks and uh, relatives, friends are here today. And that was the case there, Dick, where Dumpy makes one fine save and Hayes just couldn't catch up to the ball in time. Well, he could only ask the man to do so much. It was a great save by Martin Dunphy. He took a goal away from Scotty Bell once again. The ball bounded out. They had one rebound chance. Then they had another one from Timmy Larkin. And, and an injured miss. Patriot player, too, across the way. I can't with tell With official who that Walter is. Durkin standing over him. And uh, tough break for the Patriots because, as we mentioned earlier, this could easily be a one-goal game. We're going to see that. Uh, okay, we're going to take a closer look at the injury. I don't think we'll have a chance to catch that on the replay, but once again, it was a George Mason defenders became overcommitted. The ball was played through to Scott Bell, and he took the chance ever so well. Martin Dunphy made another tremendous save at the near post. The ball bounded out past uh, one William Mary player, but Timmy Larkin hanging at the top yes. of the box. A right took winger. That shot low and in the goal. You can't fault Martin Dunphy for that. He's it's, been absolutely fantastic all game long. And that's and a, William and Mary, if you keep giving them those chances, they're going to finish. They've got some good players a dick who can score. Larkin is a, only has six goals this year, but he already ha he had two game winners coming in. This could be the third. This so he's a very opportunistic Bradley, player. We're going to pause right down, here, Dick. Bob. Uh, 21 49 left in the first half, uh, left in the regulation of the score now. William and Mary won. George Mason nothing. You're watching George Mason Soccer, a media general, cable sports. We're gaining momentum. Get on board the George Mason University Basketball Express for the exciting 86-87 basketball season at the beautiful new Patriot Center. Follow the Patriots against Villanova in the home opener December 3rd. See Navy, Richmond, and the other exciting teams in the up-and-coming Colonial Athletic Association. Ensure yourself excellent seats for all 13 home games by purchasing a season ticket for only $80. Call 323-2325 for more information about season tickets. Hi, I'm Bob Gotkin, and tonight we're talking banking with Ken Trout, Senior Regional Executive of the Bank of Virginia, a major sponsor of George Mason University basketball. Bob, we feel businesses expect their bank to be a financial partner, someone that's knowledgeable and responsive, and brings to the table as a partner a broad range of expertise in the area of finance. Frankly, we're a service organization made up of people and don't want to be perceived as a gray stone building. We firmly believe that banking relationships are built on people, not institutions. As a partner, our people work in tandem with business executives in developing financial strategies that maximize company resources. In our opinion, today's business customers expect and require a broad range of sophisticated services and products. Change has been a key word at Bank of Virginia and will continue to be so in the future. And hopefully, just like George Mason University, we will be constantly changing for the better. Bank of Virginia, it's worth making the change. Member FDIC. Play back in. Doug Bradley, the injured player, hurt his head. Might have bruised it. He was taken off, but under his own power, he's apparently all right. And the Patriots are now down one nothing, and with just 21-33 left, I would say right now they're going to start pressing. Not the game beat. is really getting to be open and really El physical Cesar at this point. Look for the Patriots not to do anything crazy yet, but they need more than a tie. They need a win. So in a sense, they need two goals. They are becoming very, very aggressive, and they have to. William and Mary is not the kind of team that's going to get pushed around. Steve Kakoulis is warming up on the sidelines for William and Mary, trying to go back in. Yeah, but with a one nothing lead by William and Mary, if I was Al Albert, I'd say you're on the bench the rest of this game because all they need is a tie to get out of here in good shape, and there's no point, as you mentioned earlier, with the goalie risking their key players because there are a lot more Saturdays to come this year for this William and Mary team. Peter clearing. The Patriots 
have had the opportunities, more of them today, but William & Mary's paid off. Dumphy was just not able to get back in position. There wasn't much he could do there. JMU has not lost a game since their second game of the season. They lost their first two games. Here's a dangerous chance with Sumo. And a goal for the Scored. Patriots, Sam Sumo! Has tied the game, he comes back. The first goal was scored at 28-11. This goal scored at 29-33. So it's happened so many times, Richard Broad. When one team scores, the other team, that's when you have to play especially good on defense. The other team comes right back in a minute and 22 seconds. The Patriots have struck right back. Sumo's ninth goal of the year, his second straight game that he scored. Perhaps he's out of that slump now. Bob, you're right. That's an ever, ever important time when the we're right gonna see it again too. Scored. Taking a look at this. It's a ball played on to Ian Carter, playing it out of the back. Long ball hit up top. The header and this is Chris Meyer. Played it back to Sam Suma. There's not a lot enough pressure on the ball, and he slips it in the near post. That's a mistake that a keeper should not allow. And that might have something to do related to Ian Peters' injury, right. not being able to get to that near post quickly enough. So Sumo and Larkin have been the goal scorers. That's for Sumo, the uh, ninth goal of the year. And he's the leading goal scorer of either of these two teams out here. <clears throat> a big one for Sam. The Patriots set him up well. That's one of the best setups Sumo has had in probably the whole season. William and Mary has put Steve Kakoulis back in as a sweeper back now, and he is really limping on that ankle. Well, now with the game tied, they almost have to because we mentioned a tie wouldn't hurt William and Mary, but a loss would. 19.32 left. We've had a lot of action. It's amazing. You play, uh, what, 60 minutes of soccer here or 65 minutes with nothing and uh, with no goals and then all of a sudden in a minute 22 seconds you have two scores that's the way it goes very physical real hard Larkin. tackle by steve d'antonio on, on good Scott lead Bell. by dehan beautiful play they call uh, Rab. Ronnie Rab for being offside yes this club. tied up at one apiece but before you get too carried away the patriots need one more goal a tie wouldn't kill their chances of winning the league, but it would make their chances slim at best. William and Mary, after this, would have a home game with Madison next week, and that'll, this Saturday, rather, and that'll be a tough one, because Madison's much improved. Patriots only beat them one nothing, And a road game at Wilmington, which is almost a sure win this year for William and Mary. The Patriots would have one league game left, and that's at Richmond coming up next week. In the middle. And a good move. Good shot by Bruce Lobdell. He's the kind of player who can Peter. get you the big goal. Peter on the save. 18-27 left. Patriots have outshot w &M. Big goal there by Sumo. And I'll tell you, another goal here by Sumo, perhaps a game winner, would probably rectify uh, what's been for him a very frustrating season if he could come up with a game winner here. That could really turn it around for him. And a hot Sam Sumo down the stretch for the Patriots might just make them a formidable contender for the, in the NCAAs with the way they're playing defense. Number three, Kakoulis, who is back in. See, is Bradley still out of the game, right? They've so. sent on Kent Schiffert, number 18, right. to replace him at left back. Kent Schiffert for Again. the Patriots, their top defensive reserve, a senior from Woodbridge. He's always been a pretty uh, steady player, hasn't he? Ed? Good, reliable player. Nothing flashy, but he puts in a good, steady day's work every time he goes out there. Again, Bob, referring back to the goal by Sam Sumo. Ian Peter is hurt. He doesn't have the mobility he, he had get there earlier. And he the just post. let a goal in in the near post. You really shouldn't give a goal in the near post like he did. But he's operating at not 100% efficiency, and that's a big factor. But the question is, Dick, if they'd taken him out, and I realize he's not 100%, Maybe Al Albert knows that Lance Holland would have given up the same goal healthy. In other words, he's just not in, in the same league as his number one goalie. Sure. Ian Peters has been the guy that's taken him this far to 13-4 record. Coach Albert has a lot of confidence in him. and uh, That's a decision that you have to make. I just think it's unfortunate that he got injured and he got injured yeah. making a great save. Well, the Patriots finally were able to exploit that injury. It's a sad situation when anybody gets hurt, but it's the good teams, the winning teams, the opportunistic teams that have to take advantage of that. Bob, here's another situation. Ricky DeHaan played the ball all the way back for Ian Peter, and he just couldn't get there, so the yeah. ball's gone over the end line, and George Mason has a corner. 
and just can't give those kind of opportunities up in a well, game as critical as this and as closely fought as this. That's pretty obvious now that Albert has no confidence at this point in any other goaltender except the one who's in there, whether he's hurt or not. Uh, on the uh, near post for the Patriots is Chip Meyer waiting for this ball to be kicked in. Lobdell on the header. Here's an opportunity, Sumo. Not quite. Just couldn't get enough on it. Sumo a little frustrated. Thought he had that one. George Mason can't, I mean, William Mary can't allow George Mason Sam yeah. Sumo to slip into the box in situations like this. Here's the Bell. Scotty Bell again. He's dangerous. Great play by Bob Lilly. Just simple ball back to Martin Dunphy. Larkin scored at 21 49. And uh, that gave William Mary a lead, but they only held it for a minute, 22 seconds, because it or rather 28-11 Larkin scored, and then at 29-33, it was Sumo. For the Patriots, in the corner, it's El Cesar being pushed from behind by DeHaan, playing the sweeper position. Or rather, DeHaan's moved back to midfield now. This Kukulis has come back and out of bounds. Fine effort by Steve Hayes. He was being marked by Timmy Larkin. He just turned that ball in, knowing he had a good chance to get a corner, and he got it there. Now, if you go by statistics, and uh, obviously that's what we depend on, the Patriots have scored one goal and no more for four straight games. A tie at Duke, a win over Georgetown, win over Madison, and a tie against American. And they have not, other than a game against Catholic, which is a pretty weak team compared to uh, the competition the Patriots normally play, the Patriots have not scored more than one goal in a game since September 19th. So it's been a while. Two goals would be, uh, well, like a plethora, <laughs> an explosion. <laughs> They've had the opportunities, but uh, maybe this is the day. Maybe it takes an injured goaltender, something, a break to get the Patriots going. Well, that, in is the middle. A, that is a break, Bob. I think that uh, the injury to Ian Peter is a big factor in this game. When we say injured, we don't mean that uh, Peter's, uh, or we don't mean that Peter's in, is going to have to be carried out of here. Obviously, he wouldn't be in the game otherwise, but because he hurt his leg, he is less than 100%. 14-18 left. And Bad it's foul. William Mary's ball. It'll be Hambrick, the man who's done a pretty good job until the last couple of minutes marking Sam Sumo. He's done a good job all game long. And pushing off, and that's going to be against William and Mary. So it'll be George Mason's ball. And the Patriots have only made one substitution today, and that was because Bradley got hurt. And he's okay now because he's standing uh, on the sidelines and could come back in if, Coach, if uh, his father, uh, Gordon Bradley, needs him again. Ken Shifford is in there, his place. Dumpy. Trying to get the header is Taylor, number 17, for William & Mary. There it is again. He got a foot on it, but Hayes, right back. Good play by Hayes. Keeping the pressure on. That's what the Patriots want to do right now, is get as many opportunities, good or bad, as they can. Something's got to give. Here's Sumo! And coming in on the left side was Walsh. Good Another clearance opportunity. by Hayes Connor doing a fine Farley job that the middle. time. Good clearance. El Cesar, and uh, El Cesar's going to be called for a violation. Bob, once again, the injury factor came to play there. Stevie Kakoulis came out to try to cover Bruce Lobdell, really didn't feel sure on his uh, foot, didn't get in there, and Bruce put that cross in that really caused some problems. 13 minutes, 8 seconds remaining, regulation. But I hope you don't have to go to bed early or have to head anywhere because I have a feeling we might have an OT here. This could be an exciting one right down the line. Sleep on the job tomorrow. We don't care, but stay with us. Left side, Hayes. In the middle. Sumo. Sumo. Trying to beat Hambrick, the man marking him, the stopper. He got a shot on goal. Boy, it must be painful, uh, Dick, just for Peter to bend. <laughs> he obviously is in a great deal of pain. This is the best I've seen Sam, o Sam Sumo play in quite a some long while. time. That's right. He's gaining some confidence. Well, he He's playing with more aggression and taking more chances. And if you take chances, they're going to go. He had seven goals in the Patriots' first six games and then uh, went scoreless for eight ga uh, seven games. Seven games he didn't score until finally got the lone goal against AU. It wasn't a game winner because AU ended up tying it. Patriots 7-2-5. They've had more ties than ever before. But they have managed to go 12 games without a defeat, and that matches last year's start of the year streak in which they uh, won their first 12 games. 
That's close to a Patriot record. There's a push on Ian Carter, a bit mm -hmm. eager to get the ball. Except for that one stretch where William Mary had a lot of pressure and eventually scored yeah, a yeah. good goal. The, the Patriots have held up very well defensively. Well, it's strange how this, the pattern works, Dick. Sometimes when you score a goal, the other team comes right back, or the opposite can occur, where you score a goal, and then all of a sudden you are pressing the net, and you may not score, but you're pressing and pressing and pressing. You either lose the momentum totally, or you keep it totally. Very dangerous situation here. Sumo, or rather ball Carter. bounding around in the box. Carter doing a little uh, fancy stuff there, but not helping much, and Duffy with another fine save. He knew just where to be. Great position there, Dick. Well, he could have come out and tried to win the ball earlier, decided not to as he knew Ricky DeHaan didn't, didn't have a good leverage on that header and he stayed right in and made the See, save he made it look a lot easier than it was the amazing thing about Carter being new to this country is he's new to all these rivalries he's never seen William and Mary before he doesn't know much about these players except what his teammates have told him yet uh, he seems to know exactly what position to be in just instinct I guess and knowledge of the game Peter clearing it out Peter's a junior and has played against the Patriots before. <clears throat> has he been one? Has Peter been considered one of the better goaltenders around this area? Last year he alternated with Lance Holland in the goal. So Lance Holland, the, the deputy for William Mary, is an experienced keeper. Here we are, dangerous counterattack right. with Bruce Lobdell. He's Lobdell. very dangerous in this On situation. The move. He gets past one man, looking for a centering. Maybe he'll take it himself, and he's knocked down. A violation, yes. Sapinski knocked him down. And Bruce, is he hurting? I called a penalty in this situation, Bob. It called well, a penalty I... kick, I believe. Lobdell, it looked like he was writhing in pain. The, pay, the call goes in favor of the Patriots, and Lobdell is limping. And as we mentioned in the first half, he has a very bad right foot, very close to being a hairline fracture. Kakoulis came out to try to and make he a may tackle. Have Let's again, hope he didn't break again, that foot. He was he slowed down by that bad ankle, and he didn't get there. And that's going to be what? Player was brought down. I a think penalty Bruce Lobdell kick? there giving a penalty kick. All right. Now, what did Dick? Any estimation of the chances of a, of a ball going in in this situation? <laughs> chances are very good. Bob, I mean, is it 20, 30 percent, 40 percent in a situation like this? They're supposed to convert these penalty kicks, and right now, most of the time you convert them, and right now, George Mason is taking a penalty kick with an injured goalkeeper who has no mobility yeah. in well, there. Well, of course, Holland would, I mean, uh, Albert wouldn't want to make a change at this point. Oh, he cannot make a change at this point. Uh, It'd be a, a violation okay. of the rules. He has to go. Well, who'll take this kick then? Can. can it be uh, anybody anyone, for the Patriots? Any one of the Patriots, and actually anybody could go in the goal for, well, for William Mary. have to identify himself has to be a player on the field. But they're going to stick with Ian Peter. Ray Alcesser is the guy taking he the has, penalty kick. Well, the only Alcesser only has two goals for the season and one game winner. That came against Georgetown a couple of weeks back. The only goal the Patriots got. 9.48 left. This could be the winning goal right here. If he gets it, the shot score! Score for Ray Alcesser. The penalty. Uh, do we get a confirmation, Nick, on who the penalty was on? Was that on Sapinski? I don't well, know it was who 15, made the foul. Wasn't it if we could see it again on any replay, we can pick that up. I believe the penalty was on Sapinski and Ray Alcesser on the penalty kick. The first one the Patriots have gotten in a couple of weeks have taken the lead. Wait a minute now. They haven't put the score up on the board. Was that a goal or not? That is a goal, Bob. It's 2 All right. I was looking at the scoreboard, and I thought it might have been a violation or something. There it is. There's the score. And we are going to see, I believe we'll see the goal again. No, we'll have a chance to see the foul, I think, on the replay. See the foul, all right. 9.48 left. No, oh, we're I think we're going to see the, the goal. Kick. Here's Alcester. He pushes the keepers left. Now, why is why automatically there was Peter going to the right? In that situation, Bob, the odds are against him. He's got to guess. He guessed that Alcester was going to play it to the other side. He guessed wrong. Even if he had guessed, he just doesn't it, have the mobility to Maybe Alcester outguesses him. Maybe Alcester figures the goalie thinks I'm going for the corner. It is a guessing contest, but if the the, the, the kick taker hits it right, it's going to be a goal. All right, that goal coming. 80 minutes and 12 seconds into this contest. At 80-12, a penalty kick, penalty on Sapinski from Springfield. Local players have figured in the way of Mary scoring today. One got a goal, the other one, because of the penalty, tripping uh, Lobdell. And here's a good opportunity for WNM and Dumpy on the save. A header from behind by DeHaan. Elsesser with his third goal of the season. 
in the middle. It's Lobdell again, and he gets tripped again. Actually, uh, he and Kakulis collide, and things are getting a bit pushy. Wayman Mary is, is back pressing probably now, Dick, the way Mason was pressing when Wayman Mary scored first. They're going to have to throw some players forward and see if they can most make the most of their chances now. It's the most goals, other than the win over Division Three Catholic U, the most goals the Patriots have scored in a Division I game in their last nine games. Two goals. That's how tough it's been to come by, and... The injuries, the penalty kick, sometimes you need those kind of breaks to get out of a scoring slump. There's a good chance here, Bob, yes. for ball down to Gordon Bradley on the flanks. Yeah, Doug William Bradley, Mary's right. defense looking a little bit and panicked Brad now. Doug Bradley is back in the game, so every player who's been hurt today has either stayed in or come back in. So fortunately, we haven't had anything serious. Right side, Meyer trying to beat Sapinski in the corner, and a good play by Sapinski. 7.42 left in the contest. Should the Patriots win it, they would be 4-0-2 with Rich on the road and don't kid yourself Richmond's a, a pretty decent team this year they've lost two league games but they could be a spoiler uh, William Mary Mary would has be four made and a one. change Bob they've made a, a, a switch they yes. brought on Lance Holland in the goal and Ian Peter is limping off but as you said before Richard maybe about 15 minutes too late well, we don't want to be second guessing here, but the thing was, the penalty kick can't be saved. Ooh, There's a, a chance in Bruce Lobdell got it. Lance Holland didn't get anywhere near that I, ball. I have to ask you, why, El Cesar, what would you, what would a coach base his decision on as to who takes the penalty kick? Why not go with your goal scorer if you can pick anybody? Well, why not a sumo? Some or? players are, are more adept and more experienced at taking penalty kicks. There's a lot uh, of pressure on, is a, it on a penalty mostly kick. a mental thing because you're standing, what, 20 feet away with nobody in front of you. Yeah, I would think Yards, anybody could take it. 12 yards away. It looks a lot easier from up here than it is down there. There's a lot of right. pressure. and have to have some poise and some accuracy so, on your shot. In other words, you've been on the bench when your players have missed penalty kicks. Is that what you're saying? It's not your happiest moment as a coach. <laughs> I guess not. It's a little easier than in hockey when they have a goal kick, but it's not that easy. Duffy out of position. Wave America tie it. Here it is. And Bell over the net. Uh, I think we may have a penalty kick going the other way. Let's see. No, no. we just have a corner, corner kick. kick here, taken by Ronnie Rabb. Martin Dunphy, Dunphy came out. Dunphy out of position. He needed that help ball. that time, but Bell did have to be cleared. Bell just couldn't get on it. Oh, we've had some action here in this last 21 minutes of this contest. Again, WM Tunnel, Tunnel in good position, and the violation is on W is on. WM. Now, less than six minutes left. If you're George Mason, Dick, do you want to just use the time, play around with it, wait till the Wayman Mary man comes towards you before you pass the ball? Is that what you'd want to do? Put here? it this way, Bob, you aren't interested in winning this game four or five to one at this point. You want to take the air out of the ball, right. take plenty of time, take no unnecessary risks, and be very safe and secure in the back. Long clear by Dunphy. The Patriots, with the exception of a few minutes earlier in the second half, have been offensively the better side today. But part of that's because of Wayman Mary's injuries. Not to make an excuse, but their goalie was hurting. One of their best defenders suffering an injury, and the Patriots have not suffered uh, perhaps the severe injuries. Game isn't over yet, Bob. Nope. Wayman Mary will not quit. This is a team no, with tremendous determination. They won a lot of you know, And here's John Tuttle, and he's a dangerous player. And he and gets a, a corner for them. Good play by Tuttle just to get the shot off against Carter. WM has not lost in a while either. And looking at their statistics. Back on comes Bruce Ensley, number 20. He's William and Mary's best attacking header. And I think they'll probably be looking for him in the far post area this time. They, they lost 2-1 to one to New Mexico and 3-1 to one to Cal State a couple of weeks back. But they haven't lost in this region in quite some time. At midfield, Hambrick. Left side, Tuttle. Good ball in by Tuttle. Another opportunity for William & Mary here, perhaps. No, Bradley back on the ball, down to 425 left. Bobby Lilly was Johnny on the spot that time, Bob. That was a great chance for William & Mary, and Bob Lilly in an off-balance position made the clearance. <laughs> Clearing it in. Got a bit of a break. Martin Dunphy punched that ball down and a wild shot by William and Mary Steve Sapinski. The ball is still in. Bradley, right side, Rab, 
and El Cesar knocking it out of bounds. The Patriots will be content to knock that ball out. It uses up six to seven, eight seconds on the clock, and uh, more importantly, they don't want it. They just want to keep WM off balance here, not let them get anything started. Bradley. Sumo, and he can use up some time if you give him a little room. Sapinski may have to take a penalty to knock Sumo off the ball. Left side, El Cesar working against Sapinski. It was Sapinski's push or trip of Lobdell, which has led to what may amount to be the winning goal. Right side, Lobdell, and I think we may have an we have an offside here, or a pushing violation. You can call a foul on uh, Bruce Ensley, fouled Ray Alcesser after he gave up the ball. Not a good foul. Is this going to take more time off the clock? Only three minutes to go. William Mary's got to make a chance and convert this chance. Goals coming at 68-11 and 69-33. The WM goal 68-11. Sumo tied it up at 69-33. His ninth goal of the season. Only a second goal in the last eight contests, and then El Cesar, which with the penalty kick at 80-12. In the middle, Myers pushed off the ball. Hayes, number 11 for the Patriots. WM pressing now. Watching perhaps the CAA title slip away, down to 228 left. Of course, if the Patriots don't win at Richmond, then WM's right back in the driver's seat. So then Richmond, which comes up later this week, becomes the next crucial game for GMU. The winner of the CAA automatically goes to the NCAA tournament. GMU was there last year and beat Virginia in the first round before succumbing to AU. Right side. It's Bradley pushed off the ball, and that's a violation. And it's on number 11, Rab. He can't believe it. That's a good call. I go along with that. Doug Bradley protected the ball very well that time. Ronnie Rabb had to push to get at it. Well, Taylor came in with about seven and a half minutes left. Holland, uh, or rather Lance Holland, I should say, is the backup goalie for WM. And as we uh, simply speculation, we have speculated with the injury, suffered about eight minutes into the first half on a save made by the number one goalie, Ian Peter. That might just well tell the story of this contest. And that violation is on George Mason, on Hayes, pushing off. But it's down to 123 left, and Hayes and uh, Larkin, Fairfax. Restart may be William Mary's last opportunity. They're yes. going to have to make something out of this. Less, of just over a minute to go. Okay, good uh, view there from the back of the net. We want to thank Cliff Ray Newman and his crew, director of Media General Cable Sports, George Mason Soccer. And Thursday night, we'll be right back here to bring you George Mason and NC State women's soccer. Two of the best in the by Timmy Larkin. Wim All right, to getting ready to toss quickly. it in now. Uh, take a Scott uh, is John Tuttle, and what would he want to do in this situation? This might be his last. Ball in, in, in far put it in. I go to the far Here's post. Duffy. There's Duffy again. Knocks it away, and it's cleared out. Dumphy just couldn't get both hands on it, and Gordon Bradley's heart must have sunk on that one. Martin did have his hands on it, didn't hold that one, and uh, he was very fortunate. Down to 30 seconds left now. William & Mary with intense pressure, although GMU has had more shots on goal. Good play by El Cesar, just using up the time. He clears it out past midfield. Big play by El Cesar. And coming all the way out of the goal, Holland trying to save some time. Bradley and Rab, number 11, fighting for the ball. Patriots are going to win this soccer match and go into first place with a 4-0-2 record. It's WM's first in the league. Down to three seconds, and that's it. A penalty kick by Ray Alcesser. With 9.48 remaining, gives George Mason a hard-fought 2-1 victory over an injured William & Mary team, but a very strong one. When I say injured, their top goalie was hurt and couldn't stop either the penalty kick or the previous goal by the Patriots. George Mason winning it with their most goals in a while. And the Patriots overall now 8-2-5. and five. William and Mary 13-5. And, and I'll ask you briefly, Dick, real quick, does William and Mary have a chance if they don't win the conference at large? What do you think? Don't think they have a losses? chance at, uh, for an at-large bid, Bob. I think they have to win the conference, and it's going to okay. depend on the result of that uh, George Mason-Richmond game. All right. We'll be back to recap the action. Patriots winning it. But right now, let's pause for this message. 